former President Donald Trump was indicted today for trying to overturn his loss to Joe Biden. We have to win in November, or we're not going to have Pennsylvania. They'll change the name. They're going to change the name of Pennsylvania. Pennsylvanians have a unique role with democracy and freedom. We have seen Pennsylvanians rise up at the ballot box. The work of making this world resemble one that you would prefer to live in is a lunch pail job. Welcome to the Keystone Reckoning Podcast, a very special Keystone Reckoning Podcast for Wednesday, April 3rd, 2024. I have a big time guest with me today. That's right, an ambassador. We were able to secure an ambassador as a guest, so please, let's take this very seriously. We're going to show some serious uh, deference and respect to my guest, second grade student ambassador at Upper Allen Elementary in, in Mechanicsburg, who also happens to be my son, who is home from school not feeling well today, Augustus White, also known as Gus. Gus, thank you for being on the podcast. Hi. Okay, so Gus is a little nervous. But Gus normally is in no lack of things to talk about. So I thought it'd be fun to take a little time from being on the couch, not feeling well, to come up and just chat for a minute. So Gus, tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm in second grade and I love hockey. And my favorite sport, the Pittsburgh Penguins. Nice. Cool. And do you, you play hockey, right? Yes. And are you good? Yes. What position do you play? Defenseman. Nice. How many goals did you have this year? Five. Nice. And how many in the playoffs? Two. Nice. The kid's a juggernaut. What can I say? Okay. And you have a very special role in your school. What is that? Being an ambassador. So what does that mean? It means you are the sort of like the leader in your class. You stand up for what's right. You be an upstander. You do everything good. Right, and how did you get chosen to be student ambassador? Well, at around, I want to say, the beginning of the, close to the beginning of the school year, we did a vote for ambassador. I, I was only running against two other ambassadors. And so you had an election, and what did you do to, to how did you prepare for your election? Well, all the, all the ambassadors, there was only three running Okay. And how many could win? Just one could yeah. win. Okay. So what did you have to do to, to win your election? You had to fill out a paper saying, I will do this. I will do that. I will I will do anything right. I will do the right thing. All right. And then what, and then what did you do before the election? Uh, the, there was a vote. But one day when we came into class, everybody had a slip of paper at their seat. And there, were, there was a box on the carpet and there were three of them and the box that said Gus uh, and, and then one had the other yeah we won't say their name we won't say the other kids names but wait but didn't you have to give a speech yeah everybody running had, had to do a speech and my speech is very good did you because you we worked on it together right you practiced it and you made a very a very interesting decision which was you let off with the joke do you remember the joke it was a knock-knock joke. You don't remember it? I remember it. You said, knock-knock, Gus. What? Gus, your next student ambassador. Yeah, it was, it was a good joke. People liked it. And then when it was time for the vote, we wouldn't hear till the end of the day. Huh? And I got chosen. So when you, after people voted, but before you knew the results, were you nervous? Very nervous. Yeah, because I know from when I've gotten elected to things, like the election day is the worst, right? You're just waiting, everything's done, you're just waiting to see who won. Yes. Isn't that a great feeling, though, when you win? Yeah, it's a very great feeling. Nice. And so, okay, so you got elected, and, you know, that there, there's a saying that says you, you campaign in poetry and you govern in prose, which means the, the campaigning is the fun part. But now you had to go to work and do the hard work. So tell me about what, it, what do you do as a student ambassador? Well, you every month in school, we have a community meeting where we go over the recent topics or events at our school. And sometimes the ambassadors get to talk on the stage in front of the whole entire school. But those are usually the third graders who do that. 
And you happen to know a, a third grade ambassador, don't you? He was my brother. Yeah, we have we have a we had a set of ambassadors uh, in the house. But Atticus is was a lot easier. He didn't have to give a speech or anything like that. Yeah, and they just did a vote, and then he got chosen. Yeah. And here's something weird. His class has two ambassadors. Mine only has one. Is that maybe because you're like twice the ambassador that, that he is? Very funny. Thank you. But I believe only two kids, like a like five kids ran, mm-hmm. and not a lot, and like the, some, the three kids, like so those three kids got like no votes, but Atticus and the other kid are uh, tied in vote. Oh, maybe that's why, because they tied. Yeah, and you are allowed to vote for yourself. Yeah, well, obviously, yeah, you got to be allowed to. Did you vote for yourself? Of course. How many times did you vote for yourself? You. Oh, okay, just checking. And was and did you feel that the election was it wasn't like rigged or anything like that? Was it rigged? All right, and so I have a question. After the other kids didn't win, none of them tried to claim that they actually won. No. They didn't like raise up an army and try to storm the school. No, everybody was happy. Pretty much everybody. But so they accepted the result of the election. Yeah. So in some ways, the kids were more uh, grown up than adults were when they lose an election. Yes. Nice. Because that was like when I started to get really popular in my class. Mm-hmm. So everybody vote. Pretty much everybody voted for me. Very cool. Now, you haven't let it go to your head, have you? No. Do you have any special privileges for being an ambassador? Do you get to do anything? Like, in real life, if you're, like, an ambassador from another country, you have, like, what they call diplomatic immunity, which means you can, like, park anywhere you want. Like, you can't really get in trouble. Like, do you have that happen to you? Uh, no. No special privileges. What, and what, if you could pick any one special privilege as a student ambassador... That you could get away with anything, what would it be? Get not getting in trouble. But I thought you shouldn't get in trouble anyway as a student ambassador. You, the goal is not to, but even when you do, good. It's not good. Can you be thrown out of being a student ambassador? Yes, if you do something terribly wrong. Has anybody been thrown out? No, everybody's been good. Okay, good. That's why I like the. Yeah, and every mom. Usually on like a Tuesday or Thursday, all the ambassadors meet for a meeting in the morning and we just discuss topics like that stuff. They should be a game. It's going to be fun. So, okay. So do you think, what have you learned about being an ambassador? Like what are the things you need? You said you have to be good, right? And, And set an example. But like what are the kind of things then that you need to show your classmate like what like what do they expect from you as an ambassador they expect they expect nice behavior mm-hmm. pretty much and uh, be behaving re- like the best in the class okay. and also they they expect uh that you you will be a good friend and ambassador do you uh do you work require them to call you by a specific title are you mr ambassador or uh no you see you just go by gus yes. so you're like a man of the people i like that you don't let it go to your head yeah i don't think that's that's what i like to that's what i like to hear so okay that's leadership by the way not letting it go to your head right yeah and a, a big part of being a student ambassador is being a leader nice so okay let me ask you this what do you think it means to be a leader it means you stand up, you you lead your team, or lead lead like that. Uh you 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 don't let anything get in your way. Mm-hmm. You so when you say stand up, you don't mean like actually stand up. I no, like stand up for what's right. Okay, cool. And then uh, what you were saying mm-hmm. was like, at, so every meeting we get about three new pages in our, in our, in Good. ambassador, but like binder. You have a binder. Yeah. And it has like usually the schedule, some sort of act, like a, a I will statements is like, Kind of like I would have just talking about, like, I will stand up for what's right. I will blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. I like it. And then also there's a word of the month 
for the student ambassador. Oh, I didn't know that. What's the what was the word for this month? Oh, well, it was more of a phrase this month, but it's think when when. And that means, like, let's say you want mac and cheese for lunch, Dad. Okay. And I, and I want pierogies. Okay. And we can't decide. I want mac and cheese. You, I want pierogies. Then we can have, then one of us might say, well, we, well, we can have pierogies today. We can have mac and cheese tomorrow. So you both win. So win-win. Yeah. And that's the, yeah, that's another word for that is compromise, right? And that's what in, in real life, in politics, in government, that's what they want us to do is compromise, work together and find something that works for everybody. Unfortunately, it doesn't always work that way in the real world. It doesn't right? always work that way at school. Yeah. Well, but you don't have like, like lobbyists or you don't have like- What is this lobbyist? That's like people that are trying to like give you money and, and try to influence what you do, right? Okay. You don't have that? No, of course. Like, you know, they offer you like candy to like, you know, do a certain thing or anything. No. Okay, good. Just checking. You're not allowed to give people food. Okay. Good to know. Okay, so let's go beyond student ambassador for a minute, which is is still super cool. And I was very, very proud of you when you got elected because you worked hard on it, right? You didn't just take it for granted. So, do you you know, obviously, you know what what I do in, in our house. We talk about politics and voting and a lot of different things. So, why do you think it's important to vote? Because if nobody votes, then there's not going to be a president. Okay. And if and v- voting helps you know what's right. Like if you if somebody heard that you voted for I don't know uh, Joe Biden, mm-hmm. and they also voted for Joe Biden, then that's good. But if somebody voted for the president running against Joe Biden. That that wouldn't be good. Right. But if someone voted for somebody else because they believed in that person, is that okay? Yes. Because is everybody allowed to believe what they think? Yes. Right. And we don't disrespect anybody for how they vote. Yes. Or Do we or don't we? We don't. Right. We don't disrespect people yeah, because they're allowed to vote how they choose, right? Yeah. But it is important. Is it important to vote? Yes. Are you going to vote when you're old enough? Yes. How how often are you going to vote? When the election comes. Right. Very cool. So if you could make any one law, right, that everybody had to follow in the whole country. Oh, okay. What would it be? Oh, it's hard. Uh, it's hard. I- <laughs> All right, let me, re- let me rephrase it. What do you think is the most important thing that's going to matter for you when you're a grown-up? Like if you could, if you're like, if you're like, okay, what is something that like, hey, grown ups right now, don't screw this up for me when I'm a grown up, right? Like, what is what is that thing that you care about? The way money works. Which is how? Explain that to me. When you have money, mm-hmm. maybe you want to go buy like I don't know a sandwich. Okay. And the sandwich costs five dollars, and you have five dollars, or you have six dollars, and you just hand the six dollars over. Then you get change back. That makes sense. Okay. But but sometimes people who are generous, when they don't have the exact amount and they pay over, they say keep the change. Okay. I don't want it so that when ev- when you pay over, when you pay over, that you don't that you don't always have to give back change. So you want it so that... That would make everybody's job easier. Because sometimes it's a very specific number. Sometimes it's not. Like, you might need to count, I don't know, 64 cents. Right. And you might only have two quarters and a nickel. Then you couldn't make that. Nice. Then you'd have to split up a dollar. And now it gets even more complicated. That is complicated. Just thinking about it is complicated. Yeah. Make my head hurt. So, what, so maybe people should just use their debit cards? That would make things easier? So you want to go, you basically want to move to a cashless economy. Pretty much. Right? You want to get to where there's no cash. Yeah. Interesting. That's a pretty interesting, that's a pretty interesting take, Gus. Is there anything else that you, if you could make a law, that you would make as a law? That, uh... If I was the president and I could make a law, one of those laws would be like for any 
item that costs money, mm-hmm. well, uh, if it goes, uh, I would put like a certain numbers, like if different items, like a novelty toy, a book, if and if it costs over that certain amount of money, then you should, then it, they have to stop and they have to take the prices down. So like like price controls. Yes. So you want to, okay, so... But, like, it's a cap on every different thing. It's so like, maybe cups. Cup, a cup should cost $5. A nice cup could cost $10. But the max might be $30. Okay, so this is interesting. And to be clear to our listeners, this is not anything we discuss in advance. Like, we're just freestyling here. Yeah. So with t- what I'm hearing is... You, I, I never would have thought that you'd have been big on economic policy, but you're talking about a cashless economy and controls to fight inflation. Yeah. Wow. That is very impressive. You're, I, you're taking a very uh, economic populist stance. And I came up with that right on the spot. I can tell you definitely did. There's no doubt about it. So, all right. Well, I think we're about done. Um, Gus, are you going to come back and do some more of these? Oh, yes. I would love to. All right. Maybe we'll do like a weekly segment. Yes, be fun. All right, Gus, is there anything you want to say to the listeners out there before you go? Give me some words of wisdom. No, I have an idea. Give us a fact that's, that people may not know. You love to give random facts from watching YouTube Kids and stuff like that. Is there any random fact that we might not know? Oh, if, if you were to walk, the great, walk across the whole Great Wall of China, that would take over, that would take 18 months. Wow. And uh, and I'm just saying, like you know, you don't even sleep, you don't even take a break to eat. Like all you do is walk. That's straight walking. Yes. Impressive. Should we try that sometime? No. No. Cool, Gus. You were awesome. Thank you very much. Gus is very happy with himself, and I think we'll definitely come back and do this again. This has been the Keystone Reckoning Podcast. I'm your host Jesse White, along with special guest Ambassador Gus White. Say goodbye, Gus. Bye. Well, that's it then. And we've saved people the trouble of voting. What's next? Our, our point is that it's... I understood the point. We're going to South Carolina to set up Illinois. When I ask what's next, it means I'm ready to move on to other things. So, what's next? We're done. Fantastic. <laughs>